Here we are, live on this Throwback Thursday. My name is Scott Stanfield, and this is It's My Friday. And I want to thank you for coming uh, on the show today. I'm so excited. Is we're going to actually, we got Smoke and Mary Laurie from Smoke and Mary Bloody Mary Mix. We're going to actually uh, do some tasting today. It's almost like I'm back in the restaurant, and uh, I'm super excited for that. And, um, you know, what I want to start out with is that uh, no matter what industry you're in, no matter what you do, Sleep is the most important thing you can do for your health. So, your health. So, go to my website, um, sleep dot stronger. Excuse me, sleep dot strong for longer dot com or stronger for, for long, strong for longer dot com, and uh, download this book on sleep. Right, that way you can do everything you can to get the sleep you're So, the name of this book is Outstanding Landing, and, and um, you know, so and I learned how to do all the stuff, how all these eight pills and tie them together together by working in one of the most extre- stressful environments in the whole, whole, whole world, which is high volume, fine dining restaurants. And, uh, uh, and I go work in casual restaurants on the island and I still stay in touch with Dale Augustine from Steamer Seafood Company. And so what I'm going to do is just now just uh, get bring um, Laurie on so we can talk about, um, talk about some, uh, wow, Bloody Mary. So here we go. Let's see here. We can... Laurie, welcome to Hello. the show. Hi, glad to be here. Hello, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Ah, this is going to be so much fun. Yes, yes, yes. So hopefully everybody can hear us okay. It seems like it's breaking up. Um, just listen slower. Mm. <laughs> yeah, well, that you know, it happens sometime on my, when I have a guest on and somehow I'm trying to play with the behind the scenes settings. That's why I like took you out of the put you back in the backstage to, to do that. And so if I do a solo episode or it just, it, it, it doesn't do that. So I don't know what's going on with it. Um, but I, I'm still working with the, the tech department to try to figure those things out. And so it, was it breaking up in the beginning? It, was it yes. speeding During up or of- like this martial arts? It yeah. Was Gosh. Kind of, well, I'm- it was como o brigato, Mr. Roboto. <laughs> Uh, so, um, it, it, interesting thing about you are, we met on LinkedIn, right? And I, and I want to welcome the people that are here on LinkedIn and on Facebook and, um, and YouTube. And so we, so we met that way and you are, have been working with restaurateurs and, uh, bar managers and beverage managers, bartenders for a long time with, uh, your Bloody Mary mix. So uh, tell me a little bit about that. So, um, this mix, I, I, it happened all by accident, basically. Mm. I had a whole bunch of, this is when I was living in Park City, which is where you are. Right. And um, my husband and I lived there for quite a few years. And I was helping some friends who had a tomato greenhouse operation out of Southern Utah. And they needed help selling to move more of these tomatoes because they had a whole bunch of them. So mm-hmm. I started selling them there at the, uh, at the, at the different Park City uh, farmers markets. Right. And we had a whole bunch left over when people started coming out of the ground. So from that point, I started thinking, oh, what in the world am I going to do with these? Because I don't like to waste anything. You know, I right. grew up in a large family and you just uh, on a farm and you don't waste anything. You use everything. So when it came time, I had all these extra tomatoes. I was freezing them. I canned salsas. I did pizza sauce. Uh, you name it. I did everything. And I still had a whole bunch left. And I actually was smoking my salsa, which, you know, that's how the smoke kind of came into play Mm -hmm. with the Bloody Mary mix. But a neighbor, you know, because I didn't know what to do with all these tomatoes. And he stopped by because we were on the path of people going home and everybody would stop by our house for a beer and bullshit, you know, on the way home. And so he's like, well, why don't you make a Bloody Mary mix? And that's how it all started. I had no idea. Mm. You know, I just opened up the fridge. First, I went on Google because my husband does all the cooking in the house. So I'm like, okay, I can Google this. Four ingredients. It was tomato juice, Worcestershire, horseradish, and I think maybe celery salt. Right. And I just went, "Ah." it was (laughs) so I opened up the, you know, the cupboard with the spices, the fridge and grabbed a whole bunch of condiments. And I just started throwing a bunch of stuff in the pot and 
then, you know, I start just playing with it and tweaking it more. And then I actually start smoking the tomatoes mm -hmm. for the mix. Right. And that basically turned into five years and 16 revisions until we launched the first product, which was our Smoke and Mary original. Right. And yeah. And it just, it took off from there and it just is wildly popular. It's fresh. You know, the way that we process the mix, you'd think you just made it with all the fresh produce right there, you know, at the bar or in the restaurant. So it's it, it's really good because it allows, you know, boy, the bar managers and restaurant managers, they love how easy it is. And it's fast, you know, fast turns. One of the biggest problems, and you could probably agree with this, the problem with Bloody Marys is how long it takes for the bartender to make them. Right. I think there's two things with Bloody Marys. Um, one is, is how long, right? Because, um, you know, because most, most restaurants, or every restaurant I work in, they buy – um, a base, right? A, a base mix. And then they're doing what they need. They want to do to doctor it up. Right. So the to time it, to, to fix it, right. To fix yeah. what's wrong with it. Right. Um, I've seen where people at some places that have a heavy brunch business, um, they batch it out. Right. Where it's just like one recipe and this is how you make it. Uh, but the second thing that I see is um, bloody Mary's are, you know, when you got that, you know, is open to interpretation, right? To per certain taste. So if one bartender is working one day and a different bartender is working another day, A, it takes a long time, which is what you said, and B, they're gonna be different, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. And that's been a really common complaint that you know the bar managers have said is like patrons come in, they expect to come back and get the same drink, but when it's a different bartender, the people have, their expectations are not met. Right. You know? And, and they're just disappointed because they had that idea of what they were coming in for. And that's not what they got. Um, especially because usually they're bringing friends back with them to come and have the best Bloody Mary, you know, or, or you know, however they described it to their friends. Right. Right. Well, I know you want to um, make a, a couple drinks this morning and, um, and uh, I'm going to taste this. I know now this is not vegan. This has some beef broth in it. This is the original, right? Yes. Smoke and Berry. And um, I love the name, right? Because I, we didn't even get into how you're smoking this or any, how, you, how you come up with all this stuff. But um, while you're making a drink, I'm going to open this up and I'm going to taste the mix. And right. um, so I'm a, take it go well. Ahead. Go ahead. Take it well. So I'm going to, I'm making three different drinks because we've got three mixes. We've got our original and I'm going to do that with vodka. And then we've got green with envy. Green with envy is our vine ripe and green tomato. That one, okay. they're all fantastic. And then Little Tart, which is, this is our take on the traditional Mexican sangrita. Okay. All right, so I'll start with, let's see. There's my jigger. This is a three quarter ounce, so I'm just gonna do two of these. But generally, you know, if you're in a bar or restaurant where you can kind of, uh, not free four, but do the count. Right. We're well, just, you, you know, I'm in Utah, you know, there's going to be a clicker on that bottle somewhere, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. There's always a clicker. Yeah. Some sort of Berg measuring device or something like that, right? Yeah, uh, somebody who made a lot of money on those inventing that. Right. Uh, so I did, I, you know, and I started my career in South Carolina, and you may not know this or not, but South Carolina had mini bottles. You could not have a big bottle behind the bar. Everything was mini bottles, everything. Oh, wow. And so on a busy, like you had pars, right? So you would have like 120 house vodkas, but mini bottles stacked up behind the bar. Right? <laughs> so it was, it, it said minis of, of everything. It was really wild. Right. And then oh, yeah. like if somebody wanted a, um, uh, like a white Russian uh -huh. they had to buy the vodka <clears throat> and they had to buy the Kahlua bottle. So it was $11 drink. Oh boy. Yeah. And this was mid nineties, right? Mid nineties when this was, this is it. Wow. This is, I might have Which to, um, well, I'm, I'm on this, I'm on the original. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I figured I'd start with the, the original. 
And I just showed my bartender expertise, which, okay, so everybody is well aware. I'm not a bartender, never have been. I just like, like to do it. And I'm really good at it. I practice a lot. Mm. Right. <laughs> so, so much that I've actually just, uh, let's see. So, okay, so, so far I've got two drinks ready right now. So this is, yeah. um, this is the original. Can you see that? Okay, so yeah, we'll like go with it here. Like, a little bit to your left. There you go, right there. Okay. Yep. Yeah, there I am. He left, right. I have trouble with my left and right, so as it well, is. So this, this, this is reverse, so I had to actually tell you opposites. So and my brain was kind of, yeah. you know, working in the thing, too. So I made go this ahead. one fun. So this is made with vodka. It's our original Smoke and Mary. And the original Smoke and Mary has got the fresh tomatoes, lemons, limes, fresh horseradish, mm. and it's hickory smoked. So this one is simple, simple, simple. Um, I just did the owl eyes. Actually, I don't even know what, this might be more of an anteater because I use the okra as the nose and then the the olives as the eyes. Right. So do you, now this is the original, is that the original, right? Is that, that what that is? is? Yes, that one's the original. Wow. This is amazing. I'm, um, this is, this is super good. Now I remember when I was working in Colorado at this uh, Stanley Hotel, you sent me some samples there and we I tasted did. it. Yeah, and it was super good. And um, I ended up leaving there to go work in California. So they, we didn't ever make the switch. And they saw a ton of Bloody Marys because of the whole shiny movie and um, all that stuff, right? So that, yeah. that was, um, but that's how I really originally, um, you know, when I first started tasting it. And that's coming, coming back to me now. You know, I, what I might do since I got this bottle open now, I might go buy some oysters. And so I can put a little bit on on Absolutely. some oysters tonight right some oy a little bit of butter a little bit of garlic um put the mm -hmm. mix in the pan and then just go ahead and put them on it so i made the little tart one this one is more of a classic the sangrita so a okay. sangrita for those that may not know that's a traditional mexican uh tequila sipping sauce now mm. with the tequila sipping sauce they would generally do it each of them in a shot glass so your tequila your sangrita and then a lime we actually made a cocktail out of this. So mm -hmm. this is called Little Tart. So Little Tart is a combination of different citrus juices with the um, vine ripened red tomatoes. And this has got mesquite smoke. And then mm -hmm. the heat on this is Chipotle. Because we have oh, sweet wow. heat and salt in this. And then we've always got the combination and the smoke. Um, so this one's just nicely garnished with just a lime. Really, really super simple and fantastic. Now right. the last one I just did, this is Green with Envy. Green with Envy, like I mentioned, is it's a vine ripened green tomato. So most green tomatoes are unripened red tomatoes. We actually right. worked with the farmers for about three years um, to create an actual ripened green tomato. So it's got all kinds of great depth of flavor. Um, it's got serrano pepper for the heat. The smoke is mesquite. And then I'm garnishing this one. See this? Wow. That is a candied slice of bacon. And I know candied bacon and just bacon in general is always a problem in the bar and in the restaurant because all of the workers want to eat them. And they're right. going to snack on them and eat them. And then right. we're like, okay, we just went through four pounds of bacon and where did it go? But we right. candy this with some cane sugar and then we sprinkle... Um, the jalapeno salt on it right and it's fantastic so when you candy it it's your swizzle stick so you're constantly using it to to stir as well as to um to nibble on while you're, right. while yeah. you're socializing well well it's um candy bacon is a very slippery slope and um, by the way my um friend gina hendrix she just uh, put in a comment. She's giving us claps right here. And, and uh, Hi, Gina. Gets, uh, Gina actually, uh, she and I went to high school together and we just reconnected and she um, she's a sommelier and, and she's in Mexico city now. And she has a Nashville hot chicken style restaurant called hot mama's kitchen. She was actually on last week uh, on the show. And, um, and uh, so she's a, uh, She's uh, she's chiming in on us here and, and saying so, uh, saying hello. So Gina, do you know what a sangrita is? Have you had one? 
Yeah, I'm sure she has. She's in Mexico. I, the internet goes in and out there, so I don't know if she's – we'll see if she, she comments back uh, here. But um, – but we'll, we'll go with that. But no, so candy bake. So here's the thing, you know, I, I, I'm a huge, you know, um, some people would call me a health nut. Right. And, and also she's on Facebook and that runs on a delay. Right. So it may take a second yeah. for all this stuff to come back to back to us. And uh, I've, I've often called bacon the gateway meat, right. To get you back to eating meat from when, <laughs> when you're, uh, and I, you know, I'll be honest. It's um when on the days that I, you know, when I've been eating meat, and if it's all natural and stuff like that, even sometimes, I that was that's kind of like the where I would slip up when I was working in restaurants. You know, it was like I would have a little bit of bacon and uh, or something like that. And I did test them. Um, you got to be careful with the sugar in that, right? You know, yeah. So I was, we just we sprinkle it just enough to coat it so that it makes the bacon candied and keeps it into, you know, the stiff formation so that you can use it as your swizzle stick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But other than that, um, which one are you drinking now? I'm green with envy. Green. So what do you think about that? Woo. I love oh, the, all of them. Pepper. It's got the Serrano pepper. So sometimes that heat of the Serrano, because it is the prep real peppers that we use. Mm -hmm. it, peppers can be unpredictable. Mm -hmm. It's not. But that, that goes really well. Um, so our mixes go with all kinds of different uh, varieties of spirits, which makes them nice for the bar because then you can create different specialty cocktails. Mm -hmm. So like the original one, the red one, that's good with vodka, gin, rum, tequila, whiskeys, white wine, mm. and even uh, beers. Right. And then green with envy is really good. I prefer it with gins or tequilas or vodka. It's also good with whiskey. And beer. Really? Yes, absolutely. So it kind of just depends on what you're in the mood for. Um, and then Little Tart, of course, the go-to with that automatically for me is tequila because of how we designed it around that, around the sangrita. But it's also delicious, really good with vodka. And then, of mm. course, you can cook with all of them. We have a lot of chefs um, bringing this into the kitchen, lots of different sauces. I had one chef in Florida... I think, yeah, he's in Florida. He sent me a picture of this lobster dish that he made, and he made a sauce with a little, I think it was a little tart or green with envy, and it was just dripping mm. off of this lobster, and I just, oh, it was unbelievable. I can tell. Yeah. I can taste it with my eyes. Um, well, here's a, here's an interesting thing about me. I, I, um, I, I've never said this publicly digitally or any of these things. My wife knows about this because there's certain tomato flavors that just like I can't eat. I just don't like them, turn my stomach. And I think it's like something to do with Campbell's soup, tomato, you know, the, the t tomato soup. And none of these have that flavor in that. I love all of these. I mean, like super love these. And um, gosh, this is it's a, for me, it's a win, 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 right? It's a win because it's simple. You just got to place an order. It comes in, it's on the menu. The bartenders can just make it. And it's because you're the, the original won a, a gold medal, right? Is that what the, Oh, we, so the funny thing now, now that we've got three mixes, mm -hmm. I always enter them into the same competitions. Mm -hmm. We take all the top positions. Mm. So all of them are placing. It's really, it's funny. So Sunset Magazine, which is a big regional lifestyle magazine, right. um, West Coast and over to Utah and up, mm -hmm. gave um, our original best of class. Now this is best of class of cocktail mixers, not Bloody Marys. It's the best of all cocktail mixers. Wow. Um, it got double gold. And then of course the green took gold because it could, Red took the first two positions. And right. then um, Little Tart, we just released in March, which was mm -hmm. not the best timing, um, right. as you can imagine. So right. we've only had it in two competitions, and it has taken a gold and a silver. So first mm. and second place. Right. So, so there's been competitions going on even during COVID, right? Oh, yeah. 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 The, most of the judges are behind closed doors. So, you know, they're, yeah. They're happening still. They're, that's good. Stream. Yeah, yeah. Well, we can do everything virtually. I guess here we are. I mean, I, I had been on a podcast as a guest. It was a, a craft beer podcast. I was in Colorado. She was in California. And we coordinated and had the same beers. And so we were tasting beers during the 
during the during the podcast, and that was the first time I'd really had had uh, any beer in <clears throat> in a long time because I've been keto for a long time, right? So I don't do a lot of uh, high carb right. and gluten things, and I fast during the morning. So um, if this would have been in the afternoon, maybe I would have had a little, uh, you know, you know, with mine, right? <laughs> Versus, uh, it's hard. It's hard breaking your fast with uh, with a little vodka or or gin, right? It's yeah. I I trust me, I've done that before. If if anybody's watching that, that's a that's something you don't want to want to, want to do, right? So, right. Uh, yeah. Um, the other thing that I want to mention is all of our mixes are gluten free. Mm, awesome. Um, and they are. There's no beef products other than in the original. Right. So depending on the restaurant, um, it you know you you've got your health conscious patrons that you know this fits nicely into that environment as well. Right. Yeah. No, and all of that's there. And I think most people who are having a, a bloody Mary may not. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's like when you get to California, you never know what's going to happen. Right. You know what they're looking for. Right. And <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it can be right. Like I, there was this uh, guy named Bill, a homeless guy who was direct traffic in the alleyway behind a restaurant. And I was like, I went out there and said, hey, Bill, I want to, you know, I really appreciate you helping us and all the things you do. And I'd love to give you a burger. And he said, no, thanks. I'm watching my red meat. Right. So, <laughs> wow. So I, I said, how about a chicken sandwich and some fries? He said, that'd be perfect. So I went in and got him a fried chicken sandwich and, and some fries. Right. And so it's a, but you never know what you're going to come across in California It's really, really an interesting place for sure. I, I enjoyed living there. It was fun. Yeah. yeah. It was an experience. I'm sure. Park yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, and uh, Park City is, um, you know, Colorado is just off the hook it, as well. Right. Because, you know, there's a lot of people go there to tap into, there's a lot of chemical imbalances in people in, um, in meaning that there, there's a lot of like uppers and downers and things going on. And so you get them at high altitude in, in Estes Park, Colorado, when they're dehydrated and they're smoking pot and they're drinking and they're whatever else may be going on. Right. It's just like, you, you just like when you, it's like it's not just the alcohol piece that comes into play there. It's it's an interesting dynamic when you're when you're in Colorado too, right? right. And and I just got a text last night that Oregon, you know, what, what they approved illegal um, psychedelic mushrooms, right? And so really, yeah, I got a text from a friend of mine. I was like, road trip. <laughs> I was like, let's go. <laughs> yeah, that's, like, that's really funny. Yeah, yeah, it is. So anyway, let's get, so what, it, let's, let's talk about COVID, right? Cause you've obviously seen a difference in buying habits and menu development and that type of stuff during COVID. And so, right. so tell me, tell me what you, you've seen and, and um, where you think it's going. Well, um, it definitely has impacted us hugely since um, most of our, we, we are, since we're an ultra premium product, hmm. um, it's definitely affected us as well as much as restaurants, I would say, because we've lost that much of our business and restaurants, you know, they haven't been comfortable enough to bring something new in mm -hmm. because they don't, they're so worried about what's going to happen next week or tomorrow because they could be shut down. Right. Um, the one thing that people don't understand and generally, you know, you think of all restaurant stuff as perishable, no shelf life. All of our mixes have a three year shelf life unopened. Mm. So the risk is minimal, but it's a great opportunity to give your patrons when they start coming back in, you've got to make a difference. And this is, you're going to have to make a huge difference in the quality of your product or what you're providing to your patrons because people are, they're going to go to the places that they get a, a very good experience more so than they normally would have. Right. So I think it's, it's so important to change it up. You mm. know, and we're here to partner with you to change it up, to make it better. You know, we can do whatever we can do to help you. Um, yeah. So the COVID thing, it definitely, it has hit us just as bad because in the retail, you know, when everybody was getting their stimulus, stimulus checks, mm -hmm. Then we were doing fine in the retail because we are the highest, well, we're the most expensive pretty much on the shelf in retail. Right. And, you know, we're competing, you know, we may be selling for 10, 12, 14, $15 a bottle, 
and we're competing with Mr. and Mrs. T's or something mm. else that's five ninety nine. Mm-hmm. And so people, because they're so worried about their finances, they're taking a second and third look going, well, we could just go with this because it's less expensive and they're still going to get their fix. Of, right. You know. So it's been challenging. Um, social media, everybody says you got to do social media marketing. We're doing a ton of it. You know, mm. and so right now what we're really focusing on is brand awareness. Right. It, and that's also what I believe that restaurants and bars really need to focus on that. Keep that brand awareness going. Tell right. people what they can expect once you reopen. Get them ready and waiting for the day that they can re- come back into your restaurant. Because mm. I think too many of us, and you might agree with this or not, Scott, but I think too many of us at this point have stuck our head in the sand mm. and just thrown our hands up and going, I surrender. I give up. Right. And we now more than ever, we can't do that. We right. can't do that. And God, I know I have had my dark days going, Oh, the sky is falling. But I, I try and really minimize that and keep it real, you know, for just a few minutes or, you know, a shortest period of time as I can, because I have to get back to how am I going to prepare people to come in and want this, you know, when they're going into a restaurant and how am I going to keep them asking for it? And, right. you know, keeping that brand, you got to keep the brand awareness and it's, it's hard, but right. yeah. Yeah. You know, I think one of the things you said is super important is that, you know, not only in addition to keeping the brand, but is what are the expectations, the elevated expectations of the guests when they come into a restaurant, come into a bar, um, after this is all over with, and as we start more normalizing, I mean, obviously this is, you know, this is not, this is election week, right? We're talking now, right? If we want to put a time. Yeah. Right. 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 But, what I mean is, is that, you know, this is the first time I've, you know, well, maybe the Bush Gore Florida thing, right. With the recount back in the day, right. Was, was one thing, but most part, you know, when you go to bed at night, on election day, who's who's going to be the next president, right? And now it's still in limbo. We just don't know, and um, and so it's once we get through this. I mean, there's I've never seen the division in our country, and I grew up in the South, right? You know, and I was born, you know, just three years after the Civil Rights Act was passed, right? So I've seen some crazy stuff growing up in the South, right? And um, and which is I don't want to get into all of those things, right? But but my point is, is that I've never seen the unrest and I've never seen like, you know, where like, and I put posted this the other day as a quote by Voltaire, right? Voltaire was one of the French philosophers in which our country uh, was created on, which is, I may not agree with what you say, but I will fight to the death for your right to say it, right? right. And what happened to that? What's really happened to that? Because now it's like, if you like candidate, this candidate, the other response is maybe a bird or an F you, or, you know, yes. you're something or like that. It's like, yeah, exactly. Right. And so wh- how are we, you know, on top of the fact that we're all locked in our houses, we can't go eat in restaurants, that we're wearing masks in certain areas of the country. Um, and, and, you know, those things. And now all of a sudden we're divided based off this election more so than any other time I've seen in, in my life. And, and it may be the fact that, you know, it could be the media, but it also could be the fact that the internet's like putting so much information out there that people are, you know, a little bit more educated than they, they have been in the past about certain things. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, there's so much unknown mm. yeah, and it's like with the lockdowns. I mean, we're, we've moved our business to, uh, to Dallas, Texas mm-hmm. oh, about just over a year ago they just locked down all of El Paso County mm. just a couple of days ago. Nobody ever expected that to happen. They just did it on a whim. I mean, within hours, it's like, okay, now all the restaurants are closing down again. It's like, well, wait, what are you going to do to help them? Right. All that funding is like dried up. Right. And, you know, it, it's sad because there's so many people 
that took advantage of that funding and stole a lot of that funding. And I don't know if you heard those stories, but Part, yep. yeah. And, it, and so small business, which most restaurants are small business, mm -hmm. they're the ones that are suffering. Right. And, you know, there has to be a solution. I don't know the solution. I'm working on some things for my industry, mm -hmm. um, but they're not overnight solutions. These are things that are going to take, they may take a year or two to put into play. Right. Well, if we definitely, we definitely learned that how dependent we are on cash flow, right? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You firsthand, right? Well, even like, yeah, your paycheck stops showing up. That's your cash flow stopping. That's just like guests stop stopping walking in your front door of the, of the restaurant, your bar, um, right. wh wherever you're at, right? And so, or patients showing up for elective, elective surgeries at a hospital, right? right? When I was the director of food and beverage at a hospital, there was, you know, they did a ton of like hip and knee replacements and all these elective surgeries. And it, that has seasons to it. People save up all year with their FSA. They want to cash yeah. in, in December. So December is really busy that, you know, people are getting and cashing in and doing those type of things. And so there's seasonality, a lot of those things, but you take the cash flow away and then all of a sudden you're like, okay, what's, you know, there's so many things. Lease payments are doing that. Your your payment, your, your employees and their whole families are need cash flow to come in and things like that. And so we've seen restaurants that have been around for years, long, long time. Cash flow dries up and then they only can go so long because there's just there's only so many savings, you know, so much savings they can have. But right. yeah, I, it, you know, they've always what do they always say? What was the magic number? Six months in savings. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Guess what? We're past our six months. Right. Yeah. Most of we us, are. you know, and, and most people, I think, in this in the economy that we've been in for, you know, for years now, I'd say most people are lucky if they had three months in savings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and now, I mean, it's so hard, but I know they're putting out more programs now. And, you know, if, with, with anybody who has a mortgage that's struggling, call your mortgage company. Make sure you call everybody that you owe money to, because a lot of them have developed programs for COVID. The credit mm -hmm. card, you know, companies, they'll allow you to put off your payments. Um, even like the mortgage companies are doing what they call forbearance, which it just, if you have a mortgage, you still have to pay the insurance and the taxes, but they'll just tack that your mortgage interest, uh, principal and interest onto the back of your loan. <clears throat> so, I mean, that, that could be quite helpful to a lot of people so that we aren't losing homes. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's stressful. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you lose exactly. your home. Where do you go then? Yeah, exactly. We move back in with mom and dad or something like that, right? You know, it's right. like, you yeah. know, or mom and dad moves in with you, right? If that happens that way, it could go either way, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of that going on right now. Yeah, where people are just combining households. Right. So let's switch gears here because we t you mentioned retail, right? You know, and yeah. so I know that you're in Whole Foods in some parts of California, right? Yeah, Northern California, we're in 40 in, in Northern uh, Nevada, 45 Whole Foods. Uh, right. Just with the red. Took me two and a half years to get the red into Whole Foods. And mm. now to get the other two is going to take another two and a half years. So right. be patient. Um, we do sell it. Uh, and then Total Wines, we're in some Total Wines in Northern California as well. Um, you, with those, I suggest calling them to make sure that they have it for you. But mm -hmm. you can always buy it on our website, which is just smoking, S M O K I N, Mary, M A R Y dot com. Mm -hmm. And we've got, um, you can buy anything on there. You have to pay shipping because that's a real cost. That's something mm -hmm. I can't absorb. Um, but we also have, and I'm going to show you this new thing. Oh, this wow. Is, that's our new gift pack. Mm. This is for people who aren't sure which ones to get. They're 12 ounce bottles. There's one of each and you can buy these on, uh, on the website and we can ship them anywhere you want. Um, and then that gives people a chance to see what they like and how they want to use it. Cause like I said, we, we've got over 60 recipes on our website too. We cook with this a lot, a mm -hmm. lot. And everything we make with it is absolutely fantastic, delicious, unique because there's nothing like it. Um, but free downloadable, recipe book mm. and then of course with the cocktails be adventurous you know and i always tell people with the cocktails if you're gonna 
just do it in a shot glass with different spirits. See mm -hmm. what you feel like. Some days I like the original with rum. And mm -hmm. that's when I, I call that my toes in the sand drink. Because <laughs> anytime you have anytime you have rum, you feel like you need to be sitting on the beach somewhere. And right, right. Like, but if you can't sit on the beach, you can sit on your deck, close your eyes, and just sip on one. And pretend right. you're um, but yeah, so there's, we do have lots of, uh, on our website, you'll see there's a lot of different options and things to do, whether you want to cook or, or drink. Right. You, and you also, um, back to the whole foods thing there, you tell me there's a sausage they're making with your original mix too? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So the, ri the original way we, um, got in contact with whole foods, we were doing, because we did a lot of festivals and events, uh, getting brand awareness and sampling out to the public. We were doing the Reno Rodeo. Boy, this was probably four years ago, maybe. And this guy comes up and he's tasting the mix and he just chit chatted and he kept coming back and just hanging out with us. And, you know, because he was on his little mini vacation. And it turns out he was the meat buyer for Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. And he absolutely, and this is when we only had the original, mm -hmm. he absolutely loved it. And mm -hmm. he was going through all these ideas in his head of how they could utilize it at Whole Foods. So he hooked us up with their, their sausage making company. Mm -hmm. And we developed a sausage using Smoke and Mary. Wow. And, <clears throat> yeah, that's really exciting. So we now have our, I'm not sure how many stores it's in right now. And, you know, they, tr it was funny because we were talking the other day about, he's like, you know, it doesn't really taste, because they were doing it on the theme as a Bloody Mary sausage. Mm -hmm. He says, it doesn't really taste like a Bloody Mary. I said, well, how would you make a sausage taste like a Bloody Mary? Because that, mm -hmm. you know, I can't even imagine that myself, unless you right. put celery and all that other stuff in there. But mm -hmm. he says, it's really good. <laughs> it doesn't taste like a Bloody Mary. And right. So they need to call it something different, but yeah, I haven't got to taste it yet, but um, soon I hope to get some now that, you know, they've got all of our mix making this. And we actually had to change our recipe on the original mm. for that sausage making requirement, because mm. before we had the, we had a traditional Worcestershire that had anchovies in it because a right. lot of them do. Because of cross contamination, Whole Food, uh, the sausage factory, can't have any kind of seafood in there. Mm -hmm. So we had to change it. We ended up changing over to a, um, it's a Worcestershire, I can never say it, Worcestershire yeah. uh, powder, because the powder doesn't have the anchovy and it. it's got tamarind. Okay, got it. Got it. Yeah. Totally understand. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's so, so exciting. I can't wait to try that. And hopefully mm. if you're in the Northern California region, go try a sausage and let me know. Mm. Just, yeah. I'd, I right. really want mm -hmm. So um, you, you're on social too. I, we met on LinkedIn. Are you on, on Facebook and um, all the other channels? I'm everywhere. You're everywhere. I, um, I am omnipresent. Yes. That's funny. That's I've never heard it say that way. You're everywhere. Smoke and Mary. Um, and so, you know, we, you and I've talked over the, the months, you know, first COVID and, you know, things like that about different ways to, to use your product, right? We're talked about this, just brainstorming. Mm -hmm. One of them comes to mind for me is, and I know, you know, and this is just planting a seed out there in the future for anybody who may see this, is um, like oh, if you're having a wedding, right? The morning after, mm -hmm. right? A wedding, okay. right? For your wedding party, yeah. for we wedding party, you know. And we've done that. We've cr we've created. And when I was a director of food and beverage at a hotel here in Park City, where we would have these Bloody Mary bars in the morning, right? For people, um, for private events, for banquet type things. And so they would have mm -hmm. all these toppings to choose from, and all those different things. And and um, and that's that's a big thing, right? Is uh, you know. And so if you're looking to really take your you know cocktail mixes to the next level of your wedding or a brunch that you're having and, or special occasion any of those type of things you know a little bit of planning ahead ordering this stuff getting the sample pack coming in and you could you know mm -hmm. you could be a hero of the party right you could be the the, the craft cocktail mixer and they they are like where'd you get this from and you know and you must have slaved hours to be able to come up with this recipe and it's just like ice 
vodka and, and, and smoking yeah. berries, right? Yeah, it's like with some garnishes, right? Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, if anybody is in the industry, the restaurant industry, bar industry, we are providing samples. So you can just, you can connect with me either on LinkedIn or send me an email um, through the website asking for samples. We've got a wholesale page for that. Um, but the funny thing about the, um, one of the things that I realized not too far into this, but as we were doing a lot of the sampling to the general public, when we were doing all these festivals and shows, it wasn't just a Bloody Mary mix because mm. every single person, well, I won't say, let's say 90% of the people realistically, it wasn't a hundred percent. Every person that really liked it, they went into this whole emotional experience. Mm. And, 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 you know, and you know, when you taste it, you're like, wow, mm. wow. Because it's not tomato juice. It's not reconstituted anything. Because that's when you were talking about the problem with Campbell's tomato soup. It's right. a reconstituted tomato juice. Mm -hmm. That they, It's everything that's reconstituted where we actually get these direct from the farmers. Mm. You know, this is, you know, and that's why Green with Envy took three years because the farmers were working out the issues that they were having with that crop. Right. Now that that's all worked out. And we're ordering, I don't know, probably a hundred thousand pounds of tomatoes a year mm. is what we're, we're going through at this point. But, you know, you can actually taste every single ingredient in there. Mm. And as I was sitting here sipping on the green with envy with gin, this brings out a lot of the celery in there. So you can mm. taste the celery. So that's, and that whole experience is what you're creating when you're drinking the, the Smoke and Mary, Bloody Mary mixes. Right. I, I can even imagine that with a, a barrel aged gin, right? Oh, which has sure. got, yeah, which has got some age in it, a little bit more, a little bit more smoke in there as yeah. well, <clears throat> you know, with that. Um, but there is really, I mean, this is all, I'm, what was it, Emerald used to say? I wish you had like a, um, Bam. a yeah, well, bam, right? But nobody used to say smell a vision, right? Where, you know, it's so, I wish you could smell this, right? And what I, what I mean is, is that it's so hard to explain the layers of flavor that you get going on in each one of these mixes. They're so unique. Um, but the one consistent thing in all of these is that there's layers of flavor in there in each one of them, and you can taste everything. And they, um, they're, they're unique. The brand itself is unique is what I'm really getting at. And that you have super high quality premium ingredients. While at the same time, there's nothing that's really stepping on the other thing's toes when it comes to the flavors, right? Because right. it all pairs really well. And I think that, that that allows this flexibility you're talking about where it's not like it's, it has to be made with vodka or, you know, or it has to be made with this or it has to be made with that because, it a depends on your mood, right? I'm and I used to live in the Caribbean, right? I don't know if you know that or not. I used to live on St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands, so I've had my fair share of cruising rum, probably more than my fair share, to be honest with you, right? But <laughs> um, and um, my friend Hal Wright, who wrote a book on uh, whiskeys in Colorado, New Mexico, and and um, he he is was doing research on writing a book on rum. And the first time I met him, I went over to his house and we drank rum for four hours. Right. So, um, uh, it's, it's, it's like, yeah, yeah, it was tasting. We were just tasting rums from around the, you know, the West Indies. Right. right. And, um, but, but anyway, um, it's, uh, it's, it's really, really cool to see what you've put together here and how all these, 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 um, the brand is consistent across all three of your products, right? Because it's so, it's so unique. And so the flavors, there's so many different flavors laying in there. So um, I, I encourage you, I mean, so on LinkedIn here, I have 30,000 followers. I don't know how many people are seeing this right now, but if you see this video, I encourage you to reach out 
and get some samples. It doesn't hurt to get samples, right? Um, to, to try this and and taste it, right? And see how if it can fit into what you're doing. Same thing, you know, if you're a bar manager and you're looking to to to, to spice up your your menu or you don't like your current mix that you have, you know, and things like that. I know that gets into convenience, right? Because I've done this, right? You order a mix and it comes in on the same truck that all your wine and your booze comes in and stuff like that. And but Here's the thing. I've always been willing to, to go the inconvenient route to make my restaurant stand out over the other ones on the block, right? And this is one way that you can do it in a very specific category um, and really start stealing some market share from your other, your neighbors, right? And that's really, in, in this day and age, right? You know, you really want to wow people so they want to come back, which is really, really, really what you, what you can do with that. And so I could go on and on and on and on about all that type of stuff. And I really love this premium product. It's, it's amazing, amazing stuff. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. It's, it, it was, it's definitely been a long journey. Um, and, yeah. You know, five years to develop it. And then now we've been on the market for five years. So it's, it's, mm. yeah. It had and to be right. I wasn't right. going to put something out there that wasn't tried and tested. We've tested this all over the country. Mm -hmm. before I even was going to go into production because that I didn't want my name associated with anything that was just eh. right that's not how I roll right <laughs> flavor yeah flavor. yeah yeah me too me too I am too it's you know I you know the menus that we've created later in my career before I got out of the restaurant world it was just like you know, and I've worked for corporations where you don't have any control over any of those things. You're just making sure it hits the recipe and the spec and things like that, which I then ended up focusing on the people more and the marketing more and really like having that scale, right, is really what I focus on with that. But I also love creating things that are super unique. I mean, I, I've created like a, an espresso teriyaki sauce from scratch, you know, for a rice bowl, right? And that was inspired from um, Franklin's espresso barbecue sauce, right? So we kind of like, how can we incorporate this layers of flavor into something that you would not expect, right? Which is what I love. This is the same thing. This has layers of flavor in here that you don't expect to be in a Bloody Mary, right? Because you've had this mm -hmm. run of the mill, you know, you know, cheap, I, I almost cursed, right? Cheap <laughs> um, Bloody Mary mix that somebody's just, yeah, that cheap crap that people are just, you know, trying to fix the problem with by jerking, you know, putting a whole bunch of Worcestershire sauce in and Tabasco and celery salt and all these other things into um, in that. So I, I want to ask you one last question before we go. And what is the craziest Bloody Mary that you've ever seen? Oh, my goodness. OK, so we did um, in in uh, South Lake Tahoe, they do an annual competition. Mm -hmm. We went up against um i think it's called the the atlantis i don't remember 100 mm -hmm. but right. it's one of the big resorts up there that we were competing against they had a bloody mary that was in a dish that was can you see my hand yeah i can see him yeah uh i'd say about 20 inches tall like almost like a big flower vase mm -hmm. that they made this bloody mary in well they had an octopus coming out of the top a, a yeah. what coming out of the top? An octopus. An octopus. <laughs> an octopus. Like, an octopus. Was that was that to add extra sea salt into the mix? I don't know what was going. You know what's going on I with that, know, right? But they had all this other seafood stuff coming out, and I said, I said, now come on, now we're competing head to head here. Is this your Bloody Mary you serve all the time? Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh no. No, we don't make them like this. And I'm like, right. really? And you entered this in the competition against me, little me. But they did get the most votes for originality because, I mean, I didn't really have an octopus available to put. Right. You know, I just, so this little one right here that I did with the nose and the eyes. Right. The nose was actually a wedge of lime. Mm. And it, I made it as I put a, a, a the tail of the... Um, of celery so or celery the stock so it looked like the furry tail or right yep i got second place to them <laughs> so i was like well okay i guess it's in the mix then but, but they got it because i mean that was just that was over the top right 
Yeah, and I, asked, I said, so what would it cost if I wanted one of these? And they're like, eh, probably $175, $200. Right. I'm like, oh, so you don't sell many of these? Yeah, no, n never. <laughs> no, never sold one. Don't. Right. No, right. So that, was, that was probably, that's the absolute most outrageous one I've ever seen. Wow. That's crazy. You know, and I've looked at, you know, developing, you know, uh, for you know, different consulting jobs, developing uh, different Bloody Marys. And you look at what they have like a slider on it or you see these things, right? A half a chicken sticking out of one. Now, now you got the octopus one, right? This the one off for the competition, yeah. right? You know, I love the fact you said I didn't just have an octopus available. You got to plan ahead on ordering the octopus to come in and you really got to you know, tenderize that thing and get it all set up the right way for it. It's, it's, uh, that's pretty, that's pretty <laughs> wicked when it comes to Bloody Mary. I don't think I'd even want to eat it. I think it was all just show. Right, right, right. But yeah. And, and, you know, a lot of times I found that when people are doing these big, huge, enormous garnishes, mm -hmm. all they're doing is covering up a bad mix. Mm -hmm. a right. Bad mix. Right. And, well, and part, part of that is by the time you get down to the cocktail, the drink, mm -hmm. it's already watered down. That's right. the other thing I didn't talk about. So the one thing is when our when the ice melts, our mixes actually our drinks get better because mm -hmm. of we have the pulp from the fresh produce that's in here. Mm -hmm. So the pulp holds the flavor. So, you know, if you drink um, the difference between drinking a glass of orange juice with pulp and one without Mm -hmm. The one without just doesn't taste like orange juice. Right. Because it's not as vibrant. Mm -hmm. All of our mixes, you will have flavor that holds on to that pulp all the way to the bottom of the glass. Mm -hmm. That was just, that was one of those surprisingly amazing things for mm -hmm. me. Cause I was like, oh, wow. Because right. you're going to have, you're going to have a lot of the stuff at the bottom mm -hmm. when you finish your drink. Right. But that's, but that's where the flavor, it's holding it all the way. Right. Right. So. Amazing. Amazing. Um, the, the, you know, like from beginning to end, right. You've thought about even, um, you know, as a drink waters down, it's going to hold flavor and how to do that. Um, yeah. it's, I like to talk. I like to socialize when I drink. Right. I, I never would have thought that. I mean, never would have thought that. Talk doesn't mean you should have a, a crappy drink. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. Right, right. Unless it's neat, you know, if it's neat, then you're safe. But for the most part, you know, if, if the ice is a, a melting factor, mm. you either got to drink it fast or you're just going to keep stirring it and hoping it gets better. And it just never does. Right, right. And then you end up ordering another one, throwing that one out, all that type of stuff, right? So yes. th those type of things, right? Yeah. So this is amazing. You know, so if, if someone has a bar and you don't have a mic, true mixologist behind the, behind the, even if you do, right, this is, could be the secret of a mixologist, right, to be able just to pour this in there. And yeah. um, and, and the, it could be like how you pair it with a specific alcohol. Like I mentioned, uh, a barrel-aged uh, gin versus, or you mentioned rum and all those different things, right? So there's all yeah. those things that could happen, you know, that way. And so, wow, we could, you and I. for hours. Hours, right? We can sit here going for hours about this stuff. Yeah. yeah, you know, and 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 I'm probably we have, right? We actually have gone on for hours, for sure, right? So I wish you all the luck in the world, and I want to thank you coming on the show. It's been an amazing thing. I never expected you. I knew we were going to taste, but I didn't know you were making full cocktails and had candy bacon and the whole the whole works, right? So no, I was going to be drinking them either. Yeah, well, you are in California. It is, you know, it's almost 10 o'clock now. So, right. <laughs> right on time. I'm in New York right now and I'm late. Yes, exactly. You are. You are for sure. And so I will, um, I'll head out to the uh, Kimball Junction uh, liquor store this afternoon since I got these mixes open and I'll pick up a bottle of something and, um, and uh, I'll pick up some oysters too, and yes. and I'll and I'm gonna gonna incorporate these into to dinner, right? And, and do that. Well, so, do you ever make hollandaise sauce for like a brunch at home? Uh, uh yeah. Um, I am a foodie as as it goes. I haven't so, made it in a while, but yes. One of the recipes on the website is using little tart as a hollandaise mm. sauce. Mm. Oh. Got it. Wow. Mm. Right so for like good. an an eggs Benedict. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Eggs 
Mm. Yeah. So just, yeah, look at the web, at the website, look at the recipes and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about because they're so diverse. I mean, we've even got the Instapot recipes. We had chicken, wow. Instapot chicken last night with, um, he used the green with Envy and we did street tacos. Wow. And they were fantastic. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, you could even like go super streamlining. You could buy the organic rotisserie chicken, right? Pull that off, right? Heat yeah. that up. Just put the sauce on it, right? Or mix it in the sauce together, right? You yeah. don't have to cook the chicken in the Instant Pot, right? And make street oh, tacos yeah. that way. Yeah. yeah. We use this as sauces all the time. Mm. Wow. The time. Have you done it on a burger yet? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, it's really good. In fact, I'll just mix the um, the original in with the meat. Right, okay. Then make your burger. Mm. That's good. Right. Yeah, because, I mean, you're adding, I mean, it's the, the salt in this is just like, you know, the it's salty. And the, flavor. And this, yeah, you're adding so much flavor, right? All that stuff into it. Let me taste it again right. because, I, because I can, right? Yes. Mm. But between the salts and the citrus, it, it marinates and breaks the meats down really nicely mm, yeah the citrus in there mm -hmm. yeah it's definitely yeah it's amazing and it's got the beef base which adds to the the beef on the burger right so the it's beef, uh, it makes it a beefy beef yes exactly it, it adds to the flavor that way wow that's amazing so again i can't thank you enough for coming on the show and where can people find you one last time our website, www.smokin, S-M-O-K-I-N, Mary, M-A-R-Y, dot com. Laurie and I do. And Thanks for you coming can use, uh, use a coupon code if you're buying this for personal use. Use the coupon code 2020. Okay. Is that 2020? That's right. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Well, I appreciate you sharing that with the, for the listeners. And um, <clears throat> that's super amazing. And if you're working in a restaurant and you want to taste this, uh, reach out to Laurie and get you a sample. All right. Absolutely. Yep. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time and doing this uh, with us. It's been fun. I hope mm -hmm. you all had a, a fun of time with us in our little virtual bar here. Yeah. It's amazing. It's been super fun. Super fun. Thank you very much. All right. Take care. All right. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Here we are. Um, we're wrapping this up and I uh, want to thank Laurie for coming on the show. Super amazing stuff. Um, here's our green with envy, right? And um, I, I can't wait to, to incorporate this in some food. You may see this in my, my channels coming up on my Instagram and things like that. So I'm going to sign off here. My name is Scott Stanfield and this is It's My Friday. And if it is your Friday, please have a great weekend.